Hi, I recently sat down to enjoy a piece of candy. Being interested in what I eat and chemistry, I started by reading the ingredient list. This is licorice with white chocolate, licorice powder and copper. The metal, the element copper, even for candy, this sounds too unhealthy. Let's take a journey into some odd metal and metal-like compounds you can find in food and drinks, including one that is about to get banned. Will I end up eating these copper balls? Be careful near high-intensity UV light, flammable liquids, strong magnets and a food additive no longer considered safe. More info coming up. As a general rule of thumb, you should never ingest pure metals, especially heavy metals denser than iron, like copper is. So finding copper in the ingredient list is a surprise. Well, we do need microscopic amounts of copper in our food. You will even find it in food supplements like this copper supplements and vitamin pills. Not as pure metallic copper though, but as the chemical copper sulfate, and in tiny amounts. Metallic copper should not be found in food. On the E-number list used for food additives in Europe, I can only find three pure metals approved as food coloring. Aluminium, silver and gold. No copper. So what could this possibly be coated with? I then remembered some metal oxides are also allowed. Here are some examples. These contain the food additives E171, E172 or, in the case of the golden one, a mixture of the two. E171 is titanium dioxide and E172 is a range of iron oxides and iron hydroxides. And one of them look a lot like the coating on the copper balls. I am pretty sure they used this and just messed up the labeling. Not pure copper but a blend of iron compounds. Great, so I can go eat and enjoy them without worries. Unless this is the additive no longer considered safe. Hmm. E171 and E172 can be found in drinks too. Here are some examples. These drink mixers have a glitter effect caused by the metal oxides. It is a stunning effect. I do like when a bottle says shake to glitter though I prefer to rotate them. Watch carefully when I stop the rotation. It forms bands. I have no idea why this happens. Is it a standing wave? A spiral vortex? Comment if you know more about hydrodynamics than I do. It does happen in all of them. However, the darker colored ruby one seems to work the best. Let's go horizontal instead of vertical. Nice! A completely different effect. Reminds me of storm clouds forming in a hurricane seen from space. What do you see? Another example is edible gold stars. Two of the ingredients are no surprise by now, but I bought these because of a third, way more interesting ingredient. E100, curcumin. The orange-yellow part of the spices, turmeric and yellow curry. This chemical will fluoresce when dissolved in ethanol and hit by ultraviolet light. Will it work with these gold stars? No, only a few weak strands appear. Disappointing. Let me demonstrate what I was aiming for, this time with the curcumin-loaded spice turmeric.
absolutely beautiful, like ethereal aurora on the planet Pandora. Do try this at home. Just be aware of the flammability of ethanol and avoid long-term exposure to UV light. Back to the subject. There's no metal in curcumin, and the fake gold, silver and whatnot are not pure metals. Enough with the fake stuff. Let's find the real deal. A pure metal in something I could eat or drink. Oddly enough, of the three allowed metals, the easiest to find is gold. Here are two vodkas containing metallic gold. One with a lot of small pieces and one with a few larger pieces. Both use 23 karat gold leaf, so around 96% pure gold. On the ingredient list, the gold is disclosed as the approved colorant E175. I am pretty sure this truly is metallic gold. I just can't help wonder, is there an easy way of getting an indication of if this really is gold? Compared to say this confectioner gold, at a quick glance it looks real and there's no ingredient list on it. They get away with this by labeling it as not meant for consumption. My guess is it is mostly made up of the usual suspects, but can I easily show it is not real gold? Being me, my immediate thought was magnets. Gold is not magnetic, it is diamagnetic, being repelled by any magnetic field, as I have shown before. The ion oxides in fake gold leaf should make it attracted to a magnet. The exact opposite reaction than real gold. Easy to spot, right? No. I was wrong. Gold leaf is not easy to handle. It is only around 100 nanometers thick, making it incredibly flimsy and unreactive to a magnet, since it's barely there. But this failure led to a much simpler and easy test. The real gold is difficult to get to float on water from surface tension alone. The fake gold leaf, on the other hand, just will not sink in water. Now that's a simple reality check. If you can't get the gold leaf to sink in water, it is not gold. If it quickly sinks, it is more likely to be gold. But why is the real gold not sinking in the vodka then? More info and another metal drink after a short message. A big, big thanks to all my patrons. I appreciate your help with keeping these videos like this one coming. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link in the description. Thank you. Alright, how can gold, which is 70% more dense than lead, float in vodka? You may have spotted clues earlier. The vodka is so crammed with thickeners that it will only partly pass through a sieve. It is more like a gel than a liquid. The gel suspends the gold leaf which is so thin it's almost all surface and no volume. For comparison, I do have an example of a gold leaf drink that has no thickeners. Guess how the gold behaves in this one. Yep, the gold has sunk to the bottom. It is not suspended for a good display like in the vodka -ish. However, the interactivity of turning the bottle into a gold snow globe has its own charm. Few things scream celebrating a win, like a magnum bottle of champagne with gold raining down inside it. Now, of all the stuff I've shown you, which one do you think is about to get banned? During the research for this video, I was surprised to find that a widely used chemical is no longer considered safe as a food additive. Titanium dioxide, E171. It is still allowed. I had no trouble finding and buying the multiple items containing E171 for this video. But it is heading for a ban in Europe next year. 
Ah well, I guess this video will serve as a memory of some beautiful things we used to enjoy. Actually, the copper balls do not contain titanium dioxide, so I'll go eat and enjoy them now. Hope you enjoyed this video enough to click like and perhaps subscribe for more like it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.